because that's the only way to be fair to everyone. I don't know if you guys agree, but definitely that's my point of view. And I know that when I said it at first, I got a little bit of backlash, but I don't care. I stand by it and look at this. This is the proof of that. What a huge difference. Hello everyone, welcome once again to my channel. It's your boy Luis Portales and for today's video we're gonna be covering the full performance of Teresita Marquez during her Reina Hispanoamericana competition in 2017. A lot of you guys have been requesting that I check this video out because she is the first title holder, the first winner of Reina Hispanoamericana from the Philippines up until today. So I'm really intrigued to see what her journey looked like and what she brought to the table when it comes to this particular competition. Now, disclaimer for those of you who are new to the channel, I actually followed Reina Hispanoamericana this year on the channel and the entire Emmanuel Vera journey and you know that I had some mixed feelings about this pageant in particular not that I didn't like the pageant itself I just didn't agree with certain points but if you guys want to know what I'm talking about please go and check out that video but what I'm trying to say is that I'm going into this one with an open mind being a little bit more hopeful and expecting better things but you know what at the end of the day Teresita was the winner so I'm pretty sure that this is gonna be a good one so before we get into the reaction the only thing that I'm gonna ask from you is that you leave a like on this video so that it gets recommended to more people that you subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one almost every single day and last but not least let me know in the comment section what do you think about the reaction, the performance, my comments and feedback and anything else and please also someone let me know how do you pronounce her middle name win win, wine win, win wine, I, I'm confused and I don't want to butch it so I'm just gonna stick to Teresita without further ado everyone let's get into today's video I really really hope that you enjoy National costume is the category. <laughs> okay, give us a little performance. Embody the costume. Okay, so let's talk about the national costume for a moment. And you know what? These videos are so, so short. Like, we honestly just get a snippet. So I decided to, when I'm giving the comments and the feedback, I'll just put a photo of the costume on the screen so you guys can see it as well. So I actually did a little bit of research prior to making this reaction. And what I found out about her national costume is that it is inspired by the Pintados in the Philippines, which is a group of people with tattoos that were found by the Spaniards when they uh, arrived in the Philippines. So with this national costume, she's not just talking about the culture of the Philippines, but she is also talking about the history of it. So I feel like it's a very good message, you know, and a good way to put the history of your country out there, especially on an international stage such as Reina Hispanoamericana, which invites so many other countries that have a very similar and common history with Spain as well, right? I also found out that her national costume made it into the top three of the best national costumes this particular year for Reina Hispanoamericana. So that is definitely another accomplishment because you can see how the costume, although it's supposed to embody a warrior, it is also very delicate. There's a lot of attention to details. I feel like the color you no know, yellow it's always very very bright very beautiful very happy with the performance that she had on stage the way that she was moving and really getting into character she was able to sell that story of a warrior but then at the same time when you look at the garment it's honestly a piece of art now let's keep watching because we're about to get into swimsuit mm -hmm. what you got wow Oh my gosh, <laughs> she is so fit. There is not one ounce of fat in that body. How to be you? Okay, let's watch it again because that's, you know, very, very fast. But I like how dramatic like her walk is. The way that she's moving, you can almost see her arms going completely to the back. So I feel like there's a lot of, you know, drama there's a lot of intensity on her walk i love it because what i've seen so far of rena hispanoamericana there's this element of show business they have to be able to catch the attention of the audience so if you go to this type of competition with more of a delicate or more conservative walks i feel like you're not gonna get the attention or the reaction from the audience that you would expect as i was telling you her body looks stunning 
definitely so so fit you can tell that she was working on her body uh, i also saw some of her photos before this competition and she already had like you know a stunning body but still props to her because it's not easy to maintain something like this and last but not least i wanted to comment as well about the swimwear per se uh, i think that this is beautiful honestly the way that it just fits her body the way that it just accentuates everything in the right places and also the color is so flattering with uh her skin tone as well i, I feel like right here she looks a little bit like morena you know like very spicy latinos love that we stand that <laughs> Very simple dress, but mm. looks like she's covered in glitter. Okay, let's talk about this. For some reason, I don't know why, but her performance here makes me think a little bit of Pia Wurzbach during um, Miss Universe. I don't know if it's the hair or if it's like the styling, the makeup, the earrings, but I don't know, like the overall aura. Talking about the dress per se, as I was telling you, I feel like it's very, very simple, but a very beautiful color. And I love the fact that it shines so much on stage. You know, you can almost feel like she's covered in glitter. Reina Hispanoamericana, it's all about being able to catch the attention of the audience so when you go on stage with something that is gonna you know have the spark under the lights it's definitely a win-win situation at all times i can almost sense by looking at this video like that filipina trademark that feeling of uh being trained well and really having all the preparation and having everything be calculated when she steps on stage because you can feel that everything her every contact with the camera uh, the way that she moves, the way that she turns around, the way that she smiles, everything is prepared and you can see that she is in control of the situation. So, so I definitely appreciate that. I know that other people sometimes prefer uh, to be more spontaneous, but to me, this is top notch. While we're at it, you know, talking about the show, I would just like to mention that, you know, props to Reina Hispanoamericana as well for really improving their production as well year over year. You know, if I look at this edition from 2017, this is like five years ago, up until the one that we just had uh, recently, you can tell how much they have evolved and how much they have grown. The stage was better in my opinion. This looks like very theatrical. Like it looks like it's a theater and they just kind of like came up with a few screens here and there. The more recent editions, I think they have like a much better production. So props to you as well, Brennan Spam Americana. See, I can critique, but I can also give props where it's due. All right. <laughs> Is... Who is it? Teresita Sen, Miss Filipinas! Come on, Teresita! Okay, you guys, why does she have a different name here? Uh, like, they're calling her Teresita Sen Marquez instead of Teresita Win Wine Marquez. Did she get married or something? Like she changed her name afterwards? Like, what's the tea? Please let me know. Inform me. televidentes. <laughs> Vamos a tener la compañía de nuestro traductor, así que... Okay, we have a translator, which I don't need because I understand everything right here, but... ¿Cómo harías vos para promover la cultura hispanoamericana si tenés una gran barrera? La barrera del idioma. Ooh, that's a very good question. What he said, and I just want to see, you know, before I watch it, how accurate the translator is. What she was asked was, how would you promote Hispano-American culture regardless of the language barrier. That's a tricky one. It's not easy because with other pageants you are really on a world stage. With Reina Hispano-Americana is really focused on like a target group of people and most of them speak Spanish. So how do you connect with them? Let's see how she did. How would you, pr how would you promote Hispanic-American culture 
with the great difficulty or barrier of language. That was accurate. Listo. Okay, Latina Talaga. Listo. Language can be learned. Language can be learned. El idioma puede ser escuchado. But the will and determination to contribute something to the organization cannot. La superación y la persistencia contribuye mucho que el idioma no. It has to come from the heart and it has to be natural. Tiene que venir del corazón y tiene que ser natural. I believe that kindness is a universal language. Yo creo que la amabilidad es un lenguaje universal. That if you treat people with tolerance, patience and love. Si tratas a las personas con tolerancia, paciencia y amor. You will understand each other. Nos podremos comprendernos unos a los otros. The Hispanic culture is not about language only. Ooh. Cultura no es acerca de barreras del idioma. It's about love for God. Es acerca del amor por Dios. Love for country. Uh, el amor hacia su patria. Love for history and culture. El amor por la historia y su cultura. And love for family. Y el amor por su familia. Oh. As a Filipina with a unique heritage, especialmente la el, I have instilled that. Aún tiene eh, mucha motivación para seguir adelante. I am ready to promote the Hispanic culture. Está lista para promover la cultura hispanoamericana. Not just in Asia. No solo en Asia. But in the whole world. Pero también a través del mundo. It is time to celebrate the Hispanic culture. Va a promover la cultura hispanoamericana. It is meant to be celebrated. Yes, bueno para estar celebrado. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Gracias a vos, Teresita. Un gusto. Wow. Honestly, mic drop. Mic drop. And this is coming from someone who is from Latin America. Okay, I'm Cuban myself, so I know for a fact that the things that she mentioned here in this answer are things that the Latino crowd really appreciated. You know, when you talk about God. When you talk about your country, when you talk about family and values and promoting our culture, listen, you stole our hearts. Just give her a crown already. I can see clearly why she won. And on top of that, you know, I feel like when you have a translator and when there is a language barrier, it's going to automatically add another layer of difficulty for the candidate because you have to have that good chemistry with the translator. You have to make sure that what they're saying is actually accurate and representative of your speech, but also the intensity on how you deliver, of also the intention on how you deliver, the emotion that you put into the speech. There are so many elements that go into providing an answer that are non-verbal so when you have a translator i feel like it's also important to have that good connection and understanding of each other she didn't just focus on the language aspect and that was what was required of the question so she answered the question from the very beginning by saying you know language can be learned it's something that you can learn easily and if that's like the main barrier if that's the main obstacle we can easily resolve that but then after that you know connecting with people is not just about language it's about culture is about you know pride is about um representation is about so many other different elements right and i feel like that's how she was really able to own that answer and take over so myself being someone who loves so much pageantry in the philippines and i watch so so many different you know candidates and pageants from the philippines i know that she did really really well for filipino standards but also when you look at it from the side of latinos you know from latin culture if you present something like this to us, we're gonna love it. We have to love it and appreciate it because it was a message that was inclusive and, and that showed a lot of appreciation for our culture as well, you know? Do you guys remember when I really ranted about Emmanuel Vera and Renes Americana this year? Because she didn't have an official translator. Look at the difference that the translator was able to make for Teresita because he was able to fairly uh, translate what she was saying, the intention, all of it. When it comes, when it comes to Emmanuel, you had another candidate who, first of all, was trying her best. So thanks to her for trying. But ultimately, she was not a trained professional to to do that job, you know. And at the same time, if you are both competing for the same title, there's kind of like a conflict of interest right there. So I'm just hoping that for upcoming editions, Reina Hispanoamericana will consider having a translator because that's the only way to be fair to everyone. I don't know if you guys agree, but definitely that's my point of view. And 
I know that when I said it at first, I got a little bit of backlash, but I don't care. I stand by it and look at this. This is the proof of that. What a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Muchas el nombre entre estas dos bellas mujeres de la nueva reina hispanoamericana. Who is it gonna be? I don't know. Y atención, porque la reina hispanoamericana 2017. Eh. It's funny how they both have like the same hairstyle and the same earrings. I feel like it was kind of like a trend back then, but you can see how pageants have evolved over time, definitely. Eh. First ever crown for the Philippines from Air RH. It's the Latino in me. <laughs> Went for the music. <laughs> All right. All right, there you go, everyone. That was the full performance of Teresita Winwine Marquez. Let's settle for that. Please let me know, correct me in the comments if I am saying it wrong. But honestly, from beginning to end, I'm so happy with the journey. I can see why she was, you know, the winner, like why she was a deserving winner. But as usual, I always tell you, it will be interesting to look at the other candidates as well, because that's when you can really compare and, you know, make like a fair judgment. But based on everything that we saw during this video, from the national costume presentation, to the swimsuit presentation, to the evening gown performance, to the Q&A segment. She really nailed all of those competitions. All throughout this video, I always try to look for things that I can, you know, critique as well. So it's not just about giving compliments all the time, but honestly, just looking at this, I'm very, very happy. Certain things when it comes to styling and the performance, the way that she presents herself on stage, I would have critiqued maybe today, but when you think about five years ago, you have to remember that this was the trend. This was what they expected from the queen. So nothing to criticize on that level. So if you enjoyed this video, please uh, don't forget to leave a like so that it gets recommended to more people. Let me know in the comment section what did you think about everything, the performance, uh, my feedback, my reaction, and all of it. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe because otherwise you're not going to get notified whenever I post new videos, which I do almost every single day. Last but not least, come here and give me a hug. That's a little tradition on the channel. You know that I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming and spending a few moments out of your day here with me. And until I see you next time, <laughs> please stay safe, be kind to one another, sending you all my love, all my kisses, and I'll see you on the next one.